If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an excess supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. Back on the show is Jasmine Jazz Debezia. She returns to action November 30th, taking on Christina Ricker at BTC8 Eliminator. Happy to have one of the bright Canadian prospects in the sport back on the show. How are you, Jasmine? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing great. So now you're on billboards? What's going on over there? Yeah, BTC, they put on a good show. They do a lot of advertisement. Uh, they took us out to the falls, and we did, like, zip lining and haunted house and stuff. It was, it was really cool. Well, thank you for doing this, by the way. And not only are you on billboards, but you get to fight in Canada. This doesn't happen yeah. for you before. How cool is this? Yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be literally the venue is like a less than 15 minute drive from my house. And so finally, like my my friends and family and everything are, are able to come. All my other fights have been like at least three hours away. So only a, only the couple could come before but now finally i'm able to have a lot of fans <laughs> so you go from plymouth massachusetts to to canada this is very exciting stuff how is uh how's training camp been going we're a little over three weeks away from your return to the cage how has the preparation been for this fight oh it's going really well um just grinding every day i mean uh you know fight fight camp is what it is it's ups and downs but i love it <laughs> We talked about your last appearance being in Plymouth, Massachusetts at Cage Titans Combat Night 2. You took on Kylie O'Hearn, and many consider this fight to be the best fight of the year in 2019 in New England. People are still talking about it. You got the yeah. win. It was it was a hard-fought battle against a, a very tough opponent. How would you rate that fight and that experience compared to the other fights that you've had in your career so far? Uh, that was for sure my hardest fight. <laughs> Definitely. A, uh, we, we both had similar styles, like just wanting to go forward and impose our will. So it was, uh, it was a tough fight. And honestly, like Kylie, my, that was probably my favorite fight, my, my most memorable fight for sure. And, uh, but once it was over, I was happy that it was over. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't want to go five rounds. <laughs> I was talking to uh, to Mike Polver in Boston last month uh, for the UFC event in Boston because he had Manny Bermudez on the card. And uh, we were talking about that fight. He, he wants to get you back. He tried to get you back for the November card, which is no longer happening now. So I guess you made the right decision here. But, you know, would you be up for going back and fighting at Memorial Hall, fighting for Cage Titans again? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I love I love Cage Titans. They were, they were a really good organization, like treated us awesome and, it was it was uh, it was a good time. When you get into a battle of attrition like that, it's hard not to take anything away from a fight like that. What did you take away from that fight with Kylie a couple months ago? Um, work on my defense. <laughs> <laughs> really been working on that. <laughs> yeah, that'll do it. That that'll oh, get yeah. your hands up. That's for sure. Oh yeah. <laughs> Well, you go from Kylie to Christina Ricker, a Tennessee fighter. She's fought for Invicta. She's fought for Valor fighting. She's been in there with some with some tough women who fought for LFA and Bellator, et cetera. She's got a lot of experience in the game. I'm sure you didn't know a whole lot about her when you got the call that she would be your opponent, but now that you've gotten to check her out a little bit and learn a little bit more about her, how do you like the matchup? I mean, I like the matchup. Um, I don't know like too much about her, as you said. My coaches, they're the ones that kind of look into her and – do all this stuff um, and just kind of tell me what to do. But I'm down to scrap no matter what, who it is. <laughs> well, we know that. If you watch your last fight, we know you're done to scrap. So <laughs> I, I saw that you got to uh, spend some time in Vegas at Syndicate yeah. MMA with, with Roxanne Mataferi, Jojo Calderwood, and others. How did you enjoy that trip and, and that training you got over in Vegas? It was awesome. Um, so, like such amazing girls there. They, I, I can't speak highly enough about them. Like, not only are they killers, absolute, like, savages, but both of them are absolute, like, sweethearts as well. And um, just ev all the, the training overall was was amazing. Um, like, they, they run a good program there. I really like it. And uh, the, coach the coaching staff was awesome, super welcoming. And, um, yeah, I can't wait to go back and get a 
definitely take the opportunity to go back as much as I can. Was that your first time in Vegas? I went uh, like two years ago. Um, I didn't really, like it was when I kind of first, not like first got into MMA, but was like really serious about fighting. So I, it was, it was obviously like a good experience, um, but I, I kind of like knew the layout a little bit. So this time was even better because I, I had already kind of like shook out the jitters from being there before, you know? Did you get to enjoy yourself at all outside of the, the training room? Not really. I like it. It's fight camp. Maybe if I wasn't in fight camp, then I would like make a point to go out more. Um, but like I went to the strip one time, like just walked around. Actually, we went to a comedy show, which was awesome. Um, so, but no, I didn't. I, it was funny. I messaged my friend. I'm like, I've been in Vegas for like 13 days. I haven't touched a drop of alcohol. Like, <laughs> I feel like it's just a record or something. <laughs> <laughs> Before we went live, you showed me the billboard, and you've obviously been been garnering a lot of attention and a lot of hype as of late. I mean, I was in New York covering UFC 244 a couple weeks ago, and we were talking about prospects that we've interviewed to different media members, and I brought your name up to to a couple of different people. All of them knew who you were, so I feel like your career trajectory, it's heading in the right direction. So with that being said... It can be very easy to get caught up in all of it and all the hype and all the chatter. How do you stay grounded and stay humble through all of it? Uh, well, I didn't know that before, so I mean, maybe my head's gonna blow up a little bit more. Oh, but no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, I think uh, I kind of stay humble because I get beat up in the room all the time. So I know, like, I'm I'm confident when I go in the cage, but I I um, I take my my beatings outside of the cage. So I stay I stay humble for sure. There you go. <laughs> Now, when it comes to this fight on November 30th, your first fight in Canada, it's finally happening. Home country fight, tough opponent. You look to improve yeah. to 3-0 and as a pro. How do you envision this fight going down? How do you visualize it all happening? Um, I mean, I'm obviously going to have my hand raised at the end of it. I know that. But uh, as for how it's going to be finished, I'm not too sure. I'll, I'll let it kind of go where it goes. I'm more like free this, this fight. I, I feel like I um, yeah have more more options. Are you feeling more comfortable? I mean, your, your your story about how you got into the sport and how you got here is just pretty crazy. I tell people about it all the time because not many people can just pick it up and just go off and running pretty much the way you have. Have you been getting more comfortable with the buildups of these fights? Because I know, like, you know, if I have something going on tomorrow and it's definitely not a fight, you know, I think about it and I get all antsy and I get all excited about it. Being a fighter is a totally different perspective. Are you feeling more comfortable throughout these buildups yeah. of these fights? Yeah, I, I'm definitely like feeling more comfortable after every fight i feel more and more comfortable of course like i'm still nervous and anxious and everything but that's what kind of keeps me going in in the the room leading up um but yeah of course there's nerves but definitely i feel more comfortable in the uncomfortable i like that more comfortable in the uncomfortable in terms i mean obviously we're not overlooking what's what's ahead of us here on november 30th what kinds of goals have you set for yourself in 2020? I mean, it's perfectly okay to look a little bit ahead, but what sort of things do you have in mind to make 2020 just as successful as 2019 has been to this point, even more so? Um, well, I'd obviously like to fight more in 2020. Um, the UFC, I'm hoping that they, they give me a call, maybe a couple more fights, and uh, yeah, keep my fingers crossed. Would you be down for contender series or anything like that? Because we know. Oh, yeah. I, I'll take I, I'll take almost any opportunity that prevent, presents itself, um, as long as it's like good for my career, of course. <laughs> there you go, Jasmine yeah. Jazz Devizius, Canada Zone, joining us once again for she returns to action at BTC Eight on November thirtieth. Definitely someone to keep an eye on, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks again, Jazz. Before we let you go, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media. Any shout outs? Anything else you want to get off your chest? The floor is yours. Sure. Uh, my Instagram is Jasmine Jazz uh, Smash the letters and it'll probably pop up. And um, yeah, obviously, thank my sponsors. I couldn't do it without them. And thank you very much for having me. No Twitter yet? 
<laughs> no, I'm terrible with like the social media already, let alone adding another thing. I'm, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try though. Listen, you don't, you, you don't act to the job you're in now. You act to the, like the job you want. UFC, yeah, you gotta yeah. get on that Twitter game. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. I will. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll jump right on that. All the best to you, Jazz, on November 30th. Appreciate the time once again. And uh, and nice to meet the boyfriend and the trainer as well. Yeah, of course. All right, take care. Thank you. Thank you.